The news with Gina Grad. So, in irony of all ironies, an evangelical pastor died of COVID 19 just weeks after showing off how packed his Virginia church was and vowing to keep preaching, quote, unless I'm in jail or in the hospital, according to New York Post. In his last known in person service on March 22nd, Bishop Gerald O. Glenn got his congregation at Richmond's New Deliverance Evangelistic Church to stand to prove how many were there, despite warnings against gatherings of more than 10 people, announcing he was being controversial by being in violation of these safety protocols with way way more than 10 people. Uh, He went on to say that he was an essential worker because he talks to God. Their daughter, Mar Mar Dash Jury, Crawley uh, told local news station that her father initially dismissed his symptoms because he has a condition that uh, often leads to fevers and infections. She's now urging everyone to please stay home. How old was he? Does it say? I will find out in a moment. While Gina's looking that up, Adam, I'll ask you a question. I I posed this question on Twitter a few times when public public officials, whether they were religious leaders or whatever they were, were were very... um, uh, defiantly uh, flaunting, uh, you know, the uh, stay at home and don't gather and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I shake hands and I blah, blah, blah. And I, uh, and I was like, okay, when this person gets coronavirus, are we allowed to laugh at the irony? And a lot, uh, most people agreed, of course, but there were a lot of blowback. People were like, why would you want someone to get coronavirus? I'm like, I don't that want anyone to get coronavirus. Maybe this guy wants to get coronavirus. I, I don't fucking know. But what, are we allowed to laugh at the irony of the guy who's like, I, 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 I'm it, immune? It, because I, I think it, I think it God. depends. I think it depends if they die or not. It's harder to laugh if they die. If they just get it, then that's definitely laughing. That definitely is squarely in the laughing category. Religious people, like deeply religious people, mm-hmm. when they die, I never quite feel as bad for them because I feel like they're with their maker, even if they're not with their maker. That's right. what they think. That's where they. That's where they think they're heading. So. Uh, I think the rule is, yes, you don't hope they get it, but if they no. do get it, then you're allowed to laugh at them. But and then if they die, you should probably not laugh at them because now they're right. dead. So but that's undeniable perfect. irony to the you know to the guy who's like you know come on whatever it is I shake hands or I'm you know opening my church and it's like well you should probably fucking not do that and here now they have it. Uh, apparently, he was sixty six. Um, but but to to your point, or maybe it's point shitting. I'm not sure. Um, if you get it, the, I guess the point is, you know, if you get it, who cares? You know, because you know maybe the bishop said it's not going to affect me. What do I care? But not only did he get it, it affected him. Well, he you know, that's had the ultimate some point. pre-existing condition because he had right. that thing where he kept getting the flu or he was compromised right. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, and uh, yeah, just I. It's weird. I have a very, I have categories for when people die you know when kids die i hate it when evil people die i think it's a good thing when deeply religious people die i don't feel so bad because i feel like they didn't feel as bad and their family members knew how deeply religious they are i have all these grades of death you and, know uh, yeah i think i think you're right to think that and that all all, all let me start that again. Obviously makes me think of defending your life when Rip Torn tells him about all the, where everybody goes. He goes, oh, children, children go straight to heaven. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And they go through all the categories. <laughs> One of the many sort of nice nuanced thoughts of that fantastic movie were little moments like that, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. in, a, in a world where you could never explain what happens after death they took a kind of surgical precision to it, you know, yeah. like how many times you had to come back, what you did, kids move ahead. You know what I mean? Just that yeah. kind of stuff. I just, that's why part of why I, it's why I love that movie and why I love Jurassic park. It was like, they took a pretty crazy premise. They made it feasible. And then we got yeah. on with our, with our movie watching. That's right. Uh, SCOTUS doing something unprecedented. The Supreme Court announced on Monday that it will hear oral arguments by telephone conference next month, including a landmark case involving President Trump's financial records and taxes. The court will hear 10 cases over six days in May, with justices and lawyers participating over teleconference to abide by all the social distancing policies. News media will have access to a live audio feed of the arguments. (coughs) Excuse me. 
Is it? Um, yeah, glad I'm isolated. Um, so yeah, all those, all those uh, oldie but goodies going to have to figure out Zoom. Yeah, that's the, uh, I mean, everyone is in the dangerous tax bracket over there in terms right. of their age or just about everyone. You cough, you laugh. Like I was drink. I don't cough in general and I don't sneeze in general, but I was like drinking some water and it kind of went down the wrong yeah, pipe. pipe and I had that cough <laughs> and I could hear Natalia like screaming from the next room. Oh, it's on, it's on. And I realized how weird and self-conscious does everyone feel about a cough? Yeah. Oh, right before now. everyone totally. was dismissed at KFI and we were still working together, anytime someone would cough, either Conway would literally take a handful of Purell, which is like liquid gold, I don't know how, just, but just for the joke, and throw it at you. Or someone would yell, coronavirus, coronavirus. So that He's was right. happening. I he bet stained jo- so many blouses that, that week. <laughs> yeah, right. I bet Jodie Foster wishes she worked with Conway Migs. instead of... Migs. Instead of Migs. God damn, it'd be such emotionally so much better for her That's to work right. with Tim Conway Jr. <laughs> than to go into maximum security dungeon with Migs in the next cell all over, yeah. right? You're Think about it. Point. It would be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Teresa, It wouldn't be like yeah. 40% better. It's oh, like- yeah. <laughs> A thousand. I'm going to say opposite end of the spectrum, man. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm. Also, Teresa posed a theory to me today because we were recording our podcast, and I don't think it applies because it's not within the window. But last year, I don't know if you may remember, you may not, at the end of May, I got very sick, couldn't breathe, coughed so much I stopped breathing, and I had to go to be taken yes. in an ambulance. And um, and that doesn't fall in the window. I know they're saying now coronavirus may have been in L.A. in the fall, and this was in May. But she said, what if? Because nobody ever told me what it was. They go, we don't know. We can take some cough syrup. They go, what if that was it? And now you have the antigens and now you're fine. So maybe I, I'd like to, I'd rather take, I'm more interested in the antigen test than the mm. coronavirus test. Just Hold on. It. Ernest yeah. Lease. Oh, no. Got a new name. Typhoid Jewess. <laughs> no, that's, that the, doesn't make any sense. You, you, you were like that uh, gay flight attendant that brought AIDS over after he uh, fucked that monkey. Uh, I don't think that's at all how that story went. Oh, I, I, I believe I, I've studied. I've been on the internet. I know what's going on. See, that's that's why some people don't like your people. You know, you come over here with your bronchial conditions. Yeah, uh, you spread the diseases around. Mm. You hurt good people. Sure. Mr. Big, it doesn't sound like you're asking anymore. It sounds like you're just using this for a way to insult her. I'm just saying. I'm just, just, asking. I'm just, oh, there, just there, saying. There, there. I'm just asking. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. Wait. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot. It, at the very least, humor us and go up at the end of your sentence. <laughs> yeah, I'm just asking. That's all. It's okay. just, you know. It's fair. You, you know, folks you, over. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. you ask a fair question. You know, you gave me a lot to think about. Mm. Thank mm. you. Yeah, you got that uh, filthy Chinese flu there. That'll pollute your lungs real good. Called COVID. Real, I'm just asking. I'm just saying. What's my <laughs> What's my tagline again? Just, just asking. asking. I'm just asking. That's all. <laughs> okay, so. fair enough. Uh, <laughs> thank you. The WWE will begin running live shows uh, because they have been deemed an essential business in Florida. Uh, this is according to ESPN. What's more Florida than that? By the way, um, in Florida, the guy who stands by the pier with the iguana on his shoulder so you can take a picture with him, that's mm-hmm. considered an essential business. Yeah, and house. In Florida. Mm-hmm. That's right. Is there anything that is not considered an essential business in Florida? If the WWE is essential. Dentist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> funny. That was good. Sorry. Uh, so, um, I'm sorry. I don't believe I sent the clip in time for the show, but I did see, you know, cause you're thinking the mayor's the dumbest person on earth. Why would he allow that? But when the mayor was asked about it, he passed the buck a little and said, you know, you know, our office got together with the governor's office and mm-hmm. bada oh. bing, bada boom. It was decided Pushing this was essential. So yeah. I don't know who, who, uh, deemed this essential, but apparently it's essential. Well, you know, uh, Florida shut down pretty late in this yes. world where there's a lot of information coming out post spring break they shut down late everyone was going nuts about spring break their death per thousand is really low hmm. now i don't know how many people are infected in florida uh, that's another question but the death per thousand right. in florida is minuscule 
to New York and even it's lower than Los Angeles. I think it's really low, but I don't, but you can't, I don't know that you can draw a straight line to, right. well, they shut down late, but anyway, you were going to say, Brian? Well, I was going to say one big factor, and a lot of people tweeted me this when I was making fun of Florida for uh, all the uh, spring breakers. They're not from Florida. They're from Alabama and Georgia and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? They Can came handle. there for a week. They went to the beach and they left. So. And, and then there's the heat, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's not yeah. good. But all I'm saying is this. When everyone goes, it's a good thing we should shut down when we shut down because if we didn't shut down we would have x y and z we still got a lot of data to sift through because florida yes. shut down late and they have a very low death per thousand maybe lower than almost anywhere in the country so there's still a lot of stuff to sift through all right and let me hit, yes i was right. gonna say think about boca and where uh, my people go to retire there's a lot of elderly in parts of florida yeah, absolutely and a lot of your kind Oh, there, Juna. I, you know, it is my fault for bringing it up. Yeah, <laughs> it's on you. All right, let me hit it. You did kind of lean yeah. into that bit. <laughs> All right, Gina. All right. I was just looking at a, a news alert that came in, but um, I don't have the subscription to the Washington Post, so I'm not even going to bring it up. Read uh, it. Read I, it. Well, no, I mean, I, I can't, uh, I can't access it, but I thought the news alert said just now Trump halts funding to the World Health Organization since we were just talking about that. But uh, I will research that further for tomorrow. The guy who, <gasps> the guy who runs uh, the World Health Organization is as creepy uh, like international characters you've ever Yeah, te- Tedros Anaman. He's or got a like lot that. of stuff going for him in the weirdo department. But just uh, facially, doesn't he, he, isn't he creepy Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yes, <laughs> yes. Pedophile Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> And he's doing a lot of defending of China. So uh, keep your eye on that guy. We'll see. Well, how about some good news? Uh, John Krasinski is really, people are loving his SGN, his Some Good News Network. He's doing this fun uh, show on YouTube that's, you know, it's usually just pulling, you know, headlines and tweets. But then now he's stepping up his game and he's giving people gifts and surprising them. And it's it's a nice, it's a nice uh, relief from every, you know, everything that's going on. So he surprised five COVID unit workers from Boston's Beth Israel Deacon Medical Center with an appearance by Red Sox legend David Ortiz on his YouTube show called Some Good News. More happened, but I'll play you this clip first. Your surprise is actually a surprise for me. He is a hero of mine, and I hope a hero of yours. Yeah! Oh, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Ortiz. How you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. How you? Hey, I got to tell you guys from the very bottom of my heart, how much I love and respect you for what you guys are doing. Taking your life, taking your your time. That's something that it goes beyond everything. So the Red Sox are going to donate four tickets for life. What? Yes. You and everybody at Beth Israel. Yes. <laughs> wow. so, right. Now, you tell them. How long have you been waiting to get tickets for the Red Sox? I thought I was a big deal, but I've been waiting on the wait list for 16 years <laughs> and I've still heard nothing. So I might be able to get Big Poppy, but I don't get the Big Poppy treatment. That's for sure. Hey. So they gave everyone, all the hospital workers, four tickets each for life uh, when they reopen, of course. And then they sent that group of workers, the COVID workers, on <laughs> what John Krasinski called the most sanitized duck boat in America, Mm -hmm. which took them to Fenway, where Jumbotron played videos of the mayor of Boston, the governor of Massachusetts, the entire Red Sox team applauding for them. It really chokes me up. It was so nice. And then they're, you know, they're running the bases and they're, they're, you know, doing all these nice things. He also announced that every nurse and doctor in America will get to have free cell service for three months through AT&T. I am sure that will be worked out in some fashion at some point. You know, it strikes me with Big Poppy, like we don't normally like fat people and we oftentimes don't like people with strong accents. But if you have the the right accent (laughs) and you have the right amount of girth, we love you even more. Right. Big Poppy has the perfect accent for us, right? It's like just enough that we can always tell what he's saying. Never gets over his skis. He doesn't say <laughs> indubitably a lot or uh, pronounce uh, aluminum, aluminum. 
or right. any of that. You know what yeah. I mean? He Vitamin. stays in his lane. He's just big, husky, like teddy, teddy bear. bear of a guy. And we just go, as Americans, we just go, I love that guy. I love that guy. Big poppy. Love it. Like, yep. I don't know anything about him other than look at that big guy. Love that big guy. <laughs> you know, like you, you dream, like I'm telling you, when I walk Phil down the street, not in this modern hell we're living in, but in the past, I'd walk Phil down the street. He's a big old lug of a dog. You know, chicks would just come running at him and like hug him and he'd be licking their face. And I love this guy. And it's like, it's all sort of based on his stature yep. and his weight. Yeah. And yep. his gait and, and just sort of the way he's looking and stuff like whatever they're reading into that. And uh, Big Poppy just, he has the, he has, is the right amount of accent, the right amount of girth, the right beard, a great nickname. Yep. And we just are in love with that case. He's, he's kind of a Dominican off. Santa Claus, right? Yes. 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 Well said. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what say we jump off some virus, virus news and do some uh, good old fashioned regular news? Kyle, oh, Ernest. Oh, and by the way, yeah. shot by mistake in your home country oh. just adds to our level of yeah. love. Ask the yeah, mystique. Adds to the yeah. lore. That wasn't a drug deal gone bad or a prostitute. He stiffed. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was just accident shot while playing pinochle at this he button. went to another level of hero yes that's right uh ernest i'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you this but kyle larson if you're familiar oh uh, yeah it's been... a good it's a dear friend <laughs> oh sure he's well great, he's great driver great wheel man i hope you're a sitting great down. great american yeah great mm-hmm. wheel man great yeah. friend i confide oh. in him well i'm I surprised you haven't heard he speaks for me he's uh <laughs> He's a wonderful, I don't know what the story is, but uh, Kyle's one hell of a driver. But he's a better, you know what? Better than driver, he's a better orator. He, he speaks. He speaks sure. to the flock. He speaks to the congregation. A lot of wisdom. You know, NASCAR yeah. guys don't normally have a lot of wisdom. Right. You know, it's just kind of turn left kind of guys. Right. Not but Kyle, this guy deep, deep, has a lot to say. Deep, deep, deep respect for the man. Okay. Deep, unabiding respect for the man so what happened well he's been fired from nascar for dropping the end bomb going too during- fast <laughs> hmm? you had a backfire no, for, for a racial racial slur during a uh, virtual racing event oh that's your cousin rachel slur <laughs> oh, rachel slur yeah what happened over there have we have we said that before I think Rachel. I think we had oh, Rachel I was like, there. that's no. that's goddamn brilliant. Uh, the star driver was competing in an eye racing event Sunday night when he seemingly lost communication with his headset while doing a microphone check. Larson said, C- "You can't hear me," and then apparently he could he couldn't be heard. Started dropping an end bomb here and there. Larson posted a video apology on Monday, but Larson was fired by his team, Chip Ganassi racing a statement from the team reads quote as we said before the comments that kyle made were both offensive and unacceptable especially given the values of our organization uh that's not the nascar you know and love Ernest. no no um i was so i saw the story i didn't know what the story was i thought he just dropped an n-bomb but you did, but I thought it was in the heat of battle or something like, like if these yeah. guys are used to being a passion, in, well, <laughs> you're, you're used to being in your car and it's deafening in there right. and God knows what's coming out of your mouth. If somebody cuts you off. Right. Right. But he said it into a mic and I'm like, well, he was in a simulator. So it wasn't, if he'd said that in his car, then, then his team would have heard it presumably, but not the nation now. Right. He said it, but the question now is, was he fucking around checking his mic? Like, I've all, I have done that before, where, like, the <laughs> mic doesn't work, and you check, and you say the, ho- you say the worst things in the world, because the person goes, I can't hear you, and then you think of the worst thing you mm-hmm. can say. Right. Which doesn't mean you're using it in anger. You're more like using it because someone said, I can't hear you, and now you're thinking of the worst thing you can say which in a kind of a weird way is defensible and that you're going, this is the worst thing someone could say if you couldn't hear me. So I don't know if he was launching it towards somebody. See, to me, I, I'm, I'm definitely a context person. If you're, if you're saying it to somebody, somebody of color, that, that's a big problem. If you're fucking around at home and you don't think people can hear you or whatever it is, and you're consciously saying it to be outrageous, mm-hmm. then I don't care. But I don't know 
what the official particulars were with him. Oh, no. Yeah, and I and I'm thinking NASCAR says to even pull at that thread makes this so much worse that yeah. they're they're not going to do the dissecting that you are. We got we have racial racial epithet, but we didn't have racial thur, slur. slur. Racial th- slur. Fantastic. Slur, yeah. So his um, mic. So his mic went bad. Yeah, I'm just kind of um, going over another he article. Said, Can you hear me? He didn't think people would hear him, so he starts saying the N word as a mm. guy who I'm guessing is just saying the worst thing you can say when he thinks people can't hear him. It's a bad decision, but I don't think he's directing it at anyone. Yeah, well, anyway. and he he had a long apology video. I spared you because we all know, you know, we can guess what it says, how sorry and, and inexcusable it is, but uh, it wasn't enough to save him in terms of staying on the team. Well, uh, I disagree with that decision. I, I, to me, it's all context. Whatever it is you say, if you think you're saying it, it's sort of like saying things where people are listening versus not listening, being secretly recorded or, or what, what have you. Now, he had a microphone on, but that's a different See, I guess there's, to me, there's bad judgment versus being, being racist, right. for instance, some what what sounds to me is we have the clip, we have the clip. Oh. Sounds like bad judgment to Perfect. me, but I don't know exactly what he was doing. At all, I can see it. You can't hear me. Hey, nigger. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hello. Who said that? Oh boy. Yeah, he did what I said. He said yeah. he's doing what I said he's doing. He went, he went Tourette's. Like he right. went like, you can't hear me. You can't hear me. You can't hear me. And then he say the worst thing you can think of, mm-hmm. which in a weird way is some sort of uh, progress because that is now the worst thing you can think of. Right. Saying that word. Yeah, true. Which is, uh, which is some progress. All right. Uh, Jeannie, want to bring it home? Can I please do one more? Yes. Thank you. This is some fantastic audio, and, and I'm only bringing it up because I know it's not really your bag, but since we just talked about it with Joel McHale, let's do it for him. Uh, so, you know, he has the Tiger King and I sort of after show, mm-hmm. and it's been just Joe Exotic uh, pandemonium for the last mm-hmm. couple of weeks. So Joe, in this docuseries, has a lot of music videos. Oh. A lot of music videos. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry to ruin it or spoil it, the magic for anyone. He's not actually singing. And he didn't actually write these songs, but he's in the videos and he's, uh, he's the star. So one of his songs is Soaring on Spotify. A rep for Spotify tells TMZ that ever since the Zookeeper's track, I Saw It's Tiger, which is majestic, uh, was added to the platform on March 30th. He's gained listeners in every single one of Spotify's 79 markets. The country who loves him the most, apparently, Denmark. Then Denmark. Uh, the UK, Ireland, Iceland fall right behind. Joe's in prison right now, a number of charges, averaging 18% daily increases in streams of his songs, which include Here Kitty Kitty. That's the one where he accuses the woman, Carol Baskin, of killing her husband and feeding him to tigers. Uh, for what it's worth, again, he didn't write these. He didn't sing them. Credit goes to the Clinton Johnson band, but he stars in them. Here's just a little snippet of, of his hit, I Saw a Tiger. Tell all the hunters to lay down their guns. Tell them that the tiger needs a little bit of love. Let them run the jungle, let them roam their land, then stand back and marvel, what a beautiful cat, cause I saw a tiger. So Why is he starring in this it. video if he didn't <laughs> sing it or write it or play it? Because he's a he's a fame whore, and this oh, is just this one of his many projects in, in prison for, for the rest of his life. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> doing a music video that you weren't in that you didn't like picking up a guitar and standing on a hood of a truck and doing and then you have nothing <laughs> you, just, to do, you didn't write the song you didn't do anything you just talked about half the music the pop music from the eighties yeah oh man. 
first uh, CNC music yeah. company and now music this? Music factory. Yeah, <laughs> Billy Vanilli. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Now destroyed. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad.